deconverted man here. I noticed something interesting when I was looking for videos, and I wanted to talk about it. I noticed that a couple different channels were uploading tons and tons of videos in favor of Allah being the real God, and every single one of these videos is the irreducible complexivity argument made in different ways. Of course, this argument has failed and will continue to fail because there is no such thing as irreducible complexivity, and even if there was, it still wouldn't mean that God did it. Most, if not all, of these videos are hilarious for anybody that understands anything about biological evolution, talking about the eyelid and how it's perfectly formed to fit over the eye. Wow, amazing. I can't possibly explain how that is. Must be God. I mean, really, it's ridiculous. It's like, oh, if you didn't blink long enough, you wouldn't get the dust out of your eye. But if you blinked too long, then you would have an automobile accident. Therefore, God. <laughs> okay. If you want to use piss-poor logic and just ignore science completely, go ahead, I guess. But I started thinking about why it is that religions tend to ignore or outright demote science or reason. And that religions will say that these things aren't true, they'll say that these things are made up, or they'll say that a scientific viewpoint is limiting or strangling to your worldview or something like that. They'll do something to demonize science in some way. Why? Well, when you keep people in the dark, when you keep them ignorant, you are safe. The old way of doing this was keeping people illiterate, and actually this is still done by many Islams, that they won't allow their women to read, they won't allow their children to read, or they'll only allow the men to read, or only certain men to read. If you keep people ignorant, you keep people away from learning, you have power over them. The church, the Catholic church back in the day, also used illiteracy to its advantage, but in this case they took the fact that the Bible was only in Latin and that they were the only translators of it as their source of power, that people had to come to them to know what God was saying at all. Of course, those people were already suckered into believing that there was, was a God, so the work had already been done for them. But once literacy became more prominent, and once the Bible became translated into other languages, the church recognized that it had lost its control there. So then, it's not unreasonable to think that it, or other religions, saw a new way to control people, and that new way is the old way. Keep people ignorant. Keep them in the dark prevent them from asking questions, discourage questions, discourage critical thinking, discourage critical reasoning, discourage anything that could potentially come against the religion. If you're anti-religious, you get killed. If you worship a different god, you get killed. You see that in the Old Testament. You definitely see that in the Quran. So this is the way to keep people mindless sheep or slaves of your religion is make them ignorant. Keep them ignorant. Make sure that they stay ignorant. So demote science. Make up lies about the world. Pretend that these lies are true and then say that God did it and that God's the only explanation and that any other explanation is made up or from the devil or from a sinner or whatever. Demonize, demonize, demonize your opponent and make sure that people stay ignorant enough to be on your side. And as I realized that this is the case for Allah and for Yahweh, I realized that what the skeptics are doing is vitally important. I always suspected that what we're doing is 
good, that what we're doing is right. But now I strongly am beginning to suspect that what we're doing is absolutely vital to humanity. That we're offering a service that no one else seems to want to offer. We are saying no to this. We're saying no to anti-science. No to keeping people ignorant. No to demoting critical thinking and questions. So today I just want to say thank you for all of you who are doing this necessary work of pushing forward the line of truth so that religion gets smaller and smaller and smaller and one day hopefully will not exist in the format that it does. We will have gatherings of humans. We will have song. We will have dance. We will have community. We need community. We need to come together and sing together. We need to come together and dance together. We need to come together and talk to each other. We need to come together and listen to one person give a speech about something. But let's have that be speeches about what's going on. Or even better, instead of just having one person, let's have two differing views debate each other and have an intellectual presentation where we can think about things and not just be told that this is true and see no opposing viewpoint to it. If it's scientific, then let's have a presentation about that and let's have the education of that flourish. Let's have TED Talks be something that's everywhere all the time. That that would be the new church. That you would go to a building of some sort, and maybe it would be more centralized than the way churches are now, that there would be just one big, large building instead of, like, a zillion different small buildings. But anyways, everyone would go there, and we would engage in conversation, we would eat and drink stuff, we would have time to try to make a new friend or find a partner, and we would listen to a couple people or several people talk, or we would all talk to each other. We would have time for singing, time for dancing, and just a good time with each other, and then go back to our lives. We need that. Absolutely do definitely need that, but we don't need the superstition. We don't need the religious mumbo-jumbo. We don't need somebody telling us that there's a man in the sky, for lack of a better description, or anything else, that there's life after this life, or that we don't even need somebody to, to tell us that things will get better, although motivational speakers can be great, and having somebody say that we're great, and that we're good, and that we can do good, and stuff like that, absolutely necessary. Comedians, absolutely necessary. But we don't need someone telling us lies. And that's what we have with religion. So, skeptics, we need to be thankful for ourselves and each other. And this is the time of year when everyone thinks about things to be thankful for. So what am I thankful for? I'm thankful that skepticism is a thing. And I'm thankful that there are people brave enough to stand up and say no to the fantasy that is mythology. Thank you so much for listening. This has been my serious Thanksgiving Day video. The next video will be something a little bit different. And less than until I have a coherent way to end these kind of videos, I must continue to try to be creative.